Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now, in this tutorial, I just thought of uh, mentioning one little th one little uh, thing I forgot to mention the last time, and uh, after that we'll go into a new program. Okay. Now, suppose if you have two values, let's say, and you want to combine this to form a complex number, there is an inbuilt intrinsic function available in Fortran and that is given by cmplx okay now in this function real and image we put in a uh, complex number and from which the real part is extracted and the imaginary part is extracted and they and used okay this function is the exact opposite wherein you put plug in the real part and the imaginary part values for the real and imaginary part and this complex function uh, this kind of cmplx function, the complex function, merges these two to produce a complex number out of it and then saves it to C. Now what it did is the, it is exactly the same program that we saw last time except that I added an, I added that uh, missing variable C uh, and if you guys notice it, it was initially A, B and D I introduced C here okay and then what I did is that using this complex function I passed in variables 5.7 and 8.9 so C is actually complex of 5.7 and 8.9 so what will be is that C will be printed as uh, 5.7 mm, plus 8.9 okay so to show to show that it has worked properly I'm comp uh, printing it here so I compiled it build it and executing it uh, just ask me for values like that comma let's enter these two and then uh, okay that's not important that's not very important here the important thing is over here then we enter cmplx 5.7 comma 8.9 it's c is getting printed here as 5.699 something and 8.8.89 and something uh, apparently this is some kind of a storing issue i suppose i have no idea why it's kind of mess going up messed up like this uh, it's something i have to you know maybe i have to consider I have no, I don't know why it is. So, and I'll let me think about it. If I, uh, if I find an answer for you guys as to why this kind of stuff happens, I'll let you guys know in, in one of the upcoming tutorials. Okay, and that okay. That being said, let's go. To, let's go to the uh, main program that main important program that I thought of explaining you guys today. Okay, and the, this program is written over here. What this program does is that this program d helps you to work with octal, binary, and hexadecimal numbers. Okay, now all we, all this time we are working with the decimal sy decimal system, wherein we have all we have the number digits are between zero to nine, uh, and de the numerals are zero to nine, and we we'll and we were using them we, and we were using them to express integers and uh, re de real numbers and so on and so forth. Okay, now what you can do is that in Fortran just like C, uh, you can use the formatting features in Fortran to print, uh, to print or to display the real number, real numbers and the binary number, binary equivalents of the numbers, of the real numbers and uh, integers, and they use them accordingly. Now, what I've done, what I've done is that, is is that uh, I introduced two way, I read in, in, I mean, uh, print or. Uh, uh, Initialize two variables i equals 67 and j equals 45.68. Uh, just random numbers, nothing much. There's no speciality in it. Just they are just random numbers. I is an integer and j is a real type. And what I did is that I'm just using the print statement and the write statement to get the values here. So what it what happens is that uh, if you want to get the real real parts and imaginary parts and uh, sorry, you just want to get them printed. With pro, uh, just want to get them printed in binary formats or other octal formats or something of that sort. What you need is actually, all you need is actually uh, the format, the format specifier. If I were to write this in separate, write this in print, it's a little, it's a little annoying. So what I did is that uh, I used this write function. Or else, what you have to do is that you just have to use, um, what do you use? What do you call? Uh, yeah, you just have to write this uh, formatting within the print statement and go about with it or use a you have to write a separate format statement again and again and go about with it so i thought you know this is easy because this is easy for easy business so i thought we'll go ahead with this write statement but doesn't matter okay this first line we're printing the real j in real s 
okay and you're printing j in a field of 14 characters in a field of 14 spaces with eight spaces that's designed for i mean like uh, uh allocated or assigned for the real in imagine in a decimal part of it and here when you write that right write this number in binary i'm using this for i'm using this specifier b okay and 45 is for 40 using 45 spaces i'm printing the octal value here using this o and uh, the hexadecimal with this character z or z okay and this 20 these are just numbers uh just spaces or stuff i'll explain you guys why it is and similarly for integers i'm using the same formatting okay and i'm printing the i i uh, if uh, instead of the real part i'm just writing it as i4 because this number is an integer so the real uh, the real formatting will not, should not be done if it should not be done nothing like nothing more so i have to compile this build this and execute this okay let me move this to the screen over here okay the real j is 45.68 something fine the real, real j in binary is this one big hell of a number one big hell of a number okay and if you guys notice let me just count this as 4 8 uh, 12 16 20 24 uh, let's say 24 28 31 thir uh, 24 28 31 there are like 31 value 31 digits over here and uh, and uh, actually if they notice there's it's not actually 31 it's actually 32 because there is there is a small value over here which is not printed it's actually this number is actually 32 digits 32 digits long so the binary number corresponding to 45.68 is 32 digits long but you should you'll be asking me since this is binary where is the where is the real number part of it exactly where is the real number part of it uh, i mean the point after the decimal point now you have to keep in mind that in while number while for floating point numbers are actually stored in the computer they do not st they, get, they get stored in a peculiar manner okay what uh, what ieee standard says and other uh, standards okay okay i'll do one thing let me just keep this aside okay i'll i'll start a note over here okay there is this ieee format okay like sometimes they call it ieee or i mean there may be other formats to store real numbers okay how how do they do is that they calculate the number of bytes so let's say for let's say we take a four byte uh, let's say we take a four byte uh, float okay you have 32 bits since it's a four by four by float you have a 32 bits and now among this 32 bits something like uh, say just giving just giving a wild number just for you guys to understand okay something like uh, uh, one one bit is used for sign convention okay something like let's say 15 bit 15 bits for mantissa mantissa uh, rest equals exponent this is how the order it goes now i'll explain you guys uh, this is exponent in power of 2 exactly this is how the this is how it goes okay for an 8 bit integer 8 byte integer 8 byte float okay there it will be like 64 bits right okay if i remember properly one bit is, is for the sign convention and this bit is actually the leftmost bit okay so the here again leftmost bit same here and then something like uh, 52 uh, b uh, by bits 52 bits for mantis i suppose and the other 11 bits uh, I'm not sure as to what I mean. These are okay. Let me just write this. Let me write it. Write it here. Mantissa. Guessing. Guessing. 
so I may I might be wrong here so I'll just using this as uh, guessing here and then I write this as exponent again this is also guessing okay so don't take this too literally but this uh, but I know the values might slightly change if you guys look check this out in Wikipedia or any other sta any other way or any other place in the internet where to I know for to know how decimal numbers are I mean how uh, floating numbers are stored what it's what it gets stored is that uh, each part get each part of uh, the mantis is stored separately and the exponent is stored separately okay uh, in this kind of a notation 50 in so 64 bit integer uh, or right, 8 8 64 bit float number what happens is that 50, uh, among all the 64 bits you have which are available the leftmost bit of the 8 8 byte fl of the you know of the 8 bytes is used for storing the sign 0 for positive and uh, 1 for negative something of like something of that sort and then uh, the ne uh, and subsequently the next uh, subsequent 52 bits might be used for storing the exp uh, mantis 52 or something of that sort this mantis is something like 0.23 something like that okay and the remaining 11 bits is used for storing and uh, storing the exponent but this ex the power of the exponent but this power of the exponent is is that in, in power of 2 so what you'll have is that something like uh, example example 2 uh, uh, let's something like let's say 0 0.256789 something of that sort and this will be this will be uh, something like uh, uh, 26 or 27 or, uh, with a with uh, with a plus or minus negative sign. This will be 26 or 27 or 22 or something. Okay. So if this is 27. This is actually 2 power 27. Now the so the number is actually here. It is 2.5 uh, 2.5 uh, times the 2 power 27 which will be approximate uh, which will be approximated to uh, base 10 which will be approximated to a base 10 value okay and this uh, mant this number is stored as the in binary and this part this int exponent is stored as a binary and that's how it job that's how it goes so that's the reason why when you print this j with uh, binary with, with real number format it gets printed nicely but when you print j in the decimal form I mean if you get print j I mean real number is prints nicely but if you print j in a binary format okay it uh, just prints only the only a proper binary number without any decimals okay now you might be asking me could this be because of the uh, because the fact that I didn't use any decimal points here well let's try it out I'll just use just for this for a thought. I'll be use seven over here, and then something like seven over here for octal, and seven over here for hexadecimal. But guys, notice P for binary, O for octal, and Z uh, Z for hexadecimal. I forgot to note hexadecimal, and I let me cut it over here. Okay, hexadecimal. Okay, now if I compile this, build this, and execute this. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, I think I already have. Uh, sorry, I've been checking a few stuff. Yeah, fine. So I think there was a small issue, but even when even when the decimal points are added, they're just working the same. They're like they're like exactly the same. Why? It's because this binary number is being uh, converted into an uh, this entire binary number when you express this as a real number okay that real number conventions of using the certain paths for mantis certain paths for exponent and all takes into consideration and then that number is print uh, that's kind of in uh, kind of converted to the real number and it's done over here where this whereas the in octal number the same number is actually converted into its equivalent octal format and gets printed over this binary number gets converted into its equivalent octal format and gets printed here and similarly this binary number gets converted into an equal equivalent hexa hexadecimal number and gets printed here simple as that now for integers it's simple now if i were to run this again okay for integers it's very fairly straightforward 
what it does is that it just kind of uh, uh, since there aren't any uh, complicated not um, complicated notions like what you see on the, what you see for integers or oh sorry what you see for floats it's uh, fairly simple fa- fa- fairly simple it just takes the number and converts it and converts into the equal and equal and binary notation and then prints it the only thing is that if you guys notice it will just print the 4 5 6 7 digits here the, this last digit there is actually one more digit this digit takes care of the sign convention so but sign convention and nothing more okay suppose if i were to you know show you guys how this actually works let me put a negative sign over here and then i put a negative sign over here if i were to compare build and execute this yeah perfect perfect now if you, now you guys notice the now you guys notice a discrepancy over here since i put a negative sign over here the numbers if you just compare this value and the previous value which i've shown this octal number and this hexadecimal number will be different entirely different and if you guys notice there will be like 4 8 16 4 8 sorry now it's 16 20 24 28 and 32 digits properly here the octal value and decimal value are fine different whereas in the binary value you have you are having some trouble here okay it's not printing it properly we'll adjust it accordingly now the octal number gets different the uh, uh, because i put a one on the top the entire value gets different so it needs lot more space a little more than 20 digits to ex- ex- explain what it is and the octal number is different and the hexadecimal is actually different all right that's a, that's how it is so what it what fortran does is that it does not literally convert the number into its binary format and print binary format or hexadecimal format or octal format and print it rather it just takes the binary format in the memory binary format in the memory uses the standard conventions used for converting it to an integer or a real and does does that job and prints it whereas for the octal and decimal octal and hexadecimal part it literally takes the octal va- uh, binary value and hexadecimal value on a, on an as is basis and prints them uh, prints them uh, actually prints them accordingly so as of now for, i think fortran does not uh, convert does not uh, convert smartly convert this but there i think there might be options to do that do that but it's worth but it's worth experimenting these are uh, this is actually of very less importance but uh, this ex- actually explains one important concept as ho- as to how the values are being stored in the computer values are being stored in the the memory of the memory of fortran this is something impo- that's something important over here that's why uh, that's one of the reasons why i wanted to explain this program okay now that's all i f- that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial uh thank you guys for watching and uh, see you guys in the next tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be working on uh, some little more advanced concepts like uh, for all st- for all statement and some proce- some procedures and all okay thank you guys for watching and uh, see you guys next time